Hundreds of officers, as you would expect, continue to work around the clock, gathering evidence to identify those responsible for what is a reckless, despicable and targeted attack. Sergei Skripal, a 66-year-old British national, and his 33-year-old daughter Yulia, a Russian citizen, remain in critical condition in hospital, having been exposed to a military-grade nerve agent on UK soil. Detective Sergeant Nick Bailey, a Wiltshire police officer who was among the first to respond to the incident, was also taken ill, and he remains in a serious but stable condition in hospital. I understand that he is making good progress. All of our thoughts on the investigation are with the victims and their families at what is a very difficult time for them. And as you would expect, this is an extremely challenging investigation. You will understand that police and partners have been dealing with a number of unique and very complex issues. I understand there is huge public interest in this case. However, with such a sensitive and complex inquiry, you'll understand that I cannot say anything that may impact on the important work and the progress being made. However, I still need the public's help. Our work to understand the events leading up to Sergei and Yulia becoming seriously ill carries on. We're of course getting many questions regarding how and where the nerve agent was actually administered. I can't comment on that at this time, but I can confirm the following. Yulia arrived into Heathrow Airport on a flight from Russia at approximately 2.40 p.m. on Saturday the 3rd of March. At about 1.40 p.m. on Sunday the 4th of March, Sergei and Yulia arrived at the Sainsbury's upper-level car park in the Maltings in Salisbury Town Centre. They went to the Bishop's Mill pub before going to ZZ Restaurant at approximately 2.20, and they were there until 3.35 p.m. Emergency services first received a report from a member of the public at 4.15 p.m., and police officers who arrived in the town centre found Sergei and Yulia in an extremely serious condition uh, on a park bench outside ZZ Restaurant. I can confirm that we've identified the nerve agent, and that has enabled the authorities to assess and help mitigate the risks attached to it. The latest assessments reveal that 38 people have been seen in relation to this incident. Of those 34 have been assessed, and I make this clear, have been discharged from hospital. Three remain in hospital, and that is Sergei, Yulia and Nick. And one person continues to be monitored as an outpatient, but is not showing signs at this time. As the Prime Minister said yesterday, we are sifting and assessing all evidence available, and we are exploring all investigative avenues. This includes extensive CCTV footage from across the city and over 380 exhibits so far. It's vital that we gather all the evidence available to us and that we leave no stone unturned in establishing the full circumstances. We have received lots of calls from the public and I continue to urge anyone who was in Salisbury between 1pm and 4pm on Sunday the 4th of March to call police on 101. In particular, I'm appealing for anyone who saw Sergei and Yulia in Sergei's car, which is a red BMW, with the registration plate HD09WA Oscar. Hotel Delta 09 Whiskey Alpha Oscar. In the Salisbury area between approximately 1 p.m. and 1.45 p.m. on Sunday the 4th of March. If you saw them in that car, please contact us. And anyone who has images or footage that may assist the investigation, please upload them to our secure website. That's ukpoliceimageappeal.co.uk. The public are going to continue to see a great deal of police activity in and around the city, including potentially more cordons being erected. But please don't be alarmed. It is necessary as part of this major investigation by the Counterterrorism Policing Network. In truth, it may last many weeks. Public safety continues to be the priority of every agency involved, working together as part of the national response. And we continue to liaise closely with public health and science experts. Anyone who has concerns about their health should seek medical assistance to reassure themselves. But please check the advice of the public health authorities. The CMO has made it very clear there is a low risk to the public. Finally, I would like to take this opportunity to share my thanks with the public for their patience and understanding, of course. An investigation of this complexity and size will understandably take a considerable amount of time. 
and the public's continued support is greatly assisting our investigation team. I'd also like to thank the brave officers who responded to the incident and those who are continuing to work tirelessly off and around the clock on this investigation. They are supported by hundreds of staff from both ambulance, fire and military colleagues. They're doing an incredible job and I thank them too. My job now is obviously to focus on the investigation and we will follow where the evidence takes us. I'm grateful for what the Prime Minister said. We need the time and space to do just that. Now, I'm happy to take two or three questions if you have them. No questions. Yes, as I've said, that is absolutely the prime focus of our inquiry, but I'm not going to comment further on it. No, it's a painstaking operation to identify anyone of interest in this inquiry and eliminate them or include them. But at this stage, we are not declaring a person of interest or a suspect at this time. Well, it's far too early to say that. But what I can reassure those people, and they have been contacted directly, is that they were there at the time. And this is over a week later, and people are not presenting symptoms. We're not seeing them. And please, please refer to the Chief Medical Officer's advice and be reassured about that. But it's too early to say, as I've said, where the uh, poison itself was administered. Okay, thank you very much for your patience.